Since the beginning of photography, the darkroom has been the place where the true artwork happens outside the viewfinder. From the vast modern darkrooms of the great photographers of the last century to the cellar stair darkrooms of the college student, this medium has provided photo enthusiasts with complete control over their work for over 100 years. Using an assortment of tools and chemicals, the darkroom gives the photographer everything he needs to print the photos he took in the exact light he expected to portray them in. The film developing process begins after the photographer creates a darkroom friendly environment. First and foremost, the room must be lightproof. The next required material is an enlarger, a tool similar to the overhead projector your teacher used in high school. This piece of equipment takes a single negative and enlarges it on a specially treated photo paper by shining light through it. Next is the developing tank. Developing tanks are steel or plastic canisters that undeveloped film is placed in along with chemicals to begin development. A thermometer, measuring cup, scissors, chemicals, developing trays, sponges, and drying clips are also other requirements. While running water is not a necessity, a washing hose is, and thus running water is recommended for any in-home darkroom. To begin the process of developing black and white film, the darkroom must be completely lightproof. A red safe light may be used later, but any light on the undeveloped film will completely expose the roll, and in doing so, ruin the negatives. Next, an array of chemicals makes up the developers. Both the stop bath and fixer are liquids that are required to develop a roll of negative film. After washing the film with filtered water, the negatives are ready to be hung up and dried. Once the enlarging process has been completed and another series of transfers from chemical trays to water trays occurs, the final drying period can begin. As interesting and artistic as this process may seem, it is easy to see how this method would need to be improved upon. While processing speed may be one of the leading reasons the darkroom has been passed over, cost of chemicals, developing equipment, and the overall expense of the rapidly shrinking world of film are all factors in this once prevalent medium's demise. As with all original ideas, newer, faster, and more cost-effective methods were developed, and the process went from slow single exposure processing to full roll printing. Recently, I had an opportunity to take an inside look at the most modern process of developing film. I set up a step-by-step -step interview with Garrett, the manager of Rockwell Camera, as he gave me insight as to what happens to an exposed roll of film once in the hands of a modern photo printer. After introducing each one of the photo processors, Garrett began to go through the morning maintenance required for each machine. Um morning, the um, machine has an automatic timer and it turns on the machine and heats up the chemistry to the proper temperature. Once uh, it's ready to go, um, just clean the rollers off overnight uh, and it collects uh, chemistry residue on the uh, top of the rollers. So morning maintenance is just to uh, clean off the rollers of any uh, leftover or hard chemistry. Garrett then took me along as he displayed the modern method of developing a roll of film from start to finish. So, the customer's roll of film comes in. Most of the time there's no leader on the film, it has to be taken out. There's a machine down here that uh, pulls the leaders. So now we have a leader of film taken out. Put a twin check on it, and what that is, we put uh, a set of numbers on the bag and a set of numbers on the negatives. So when it goes into the machine with another customer's roll of film, when it comes out, we know who's is who's. And then from here, we put it on a leader card so that it can get pulled through the machine. So from here, you can see this. Yep. Open up the, the top, just feed the, uh, the leader card in, let it hang there, and then close it up. The machine will take it from there, send it through, and uh, 14 minutes later, be out. There's four different chemicals. Uh, the first is the color developer, uh, which is exactly that, it develops in, in the color. 
bleach is um, a bleaching agent that uh, is a reverse effect of the chemical for the developer. And then they have a fixing agent which is, uh, removes any of the leftover film or uh, silver product that is not used in the uh, process. The last one is stabilizer which is um, a cleaning. Uh, it just washes the negatives off. The last step is a dryer and dries them. In this machine, the film essentially went through the developer canisters, washing and drying steps in 14 minutes. It's essentially a rack, it's called roller transport. It get, gets fed through on a leader card, and there are little catches on the card, in the rack for the card. And that uh, grabs, pulls that down to the rack through the chemistry, does what the chemistry needs to do, and then it gets fed up the other side, crossed over in one of these, and then into the next rack essentially the next chemical. After drying, the negatives are then put through another machine where they go through the stop bath and wash steps until they are finally printed on standard photo size paper. From here, the print, um, after we hit the start button, the paper uh, advances out of the magazine, comes up to this section here, which is the laser where the actual uh, print is, is exposed, then gets transferred down the line, line into the chemistry and then up and at the top. Um, if you're doing it in the dark room, you have your developer, your stop bath, and then your fixer, and then your stabilizer. Great. They've narrowed this particular process down to just developer, bleach fix, and a cleaning agent. So after going through the same process of developing in a much different fashion, the photos are printed and roll right off the conveyor belt to be sent out. This all occurs in just two machines and in half the time the traditional dark room took to print just one picture. With the advent of color photography, the in-home darkroom process began to slip into a more complicated task and slowly turned into a hobby, strictly for the purists. After roughly 150 years of successful use of the always expensive and time-consuming process, film development reached its peak and eventual downturn after the invention of digital processing. With the newer, higher quality method, film processing by hand fell to the wayside and it seemed that darkrooms of the world were dead forever. Today, some high schools and universities still have dark rooms and film photography classes, although they are becoming more and more scarce due to major cutbacks on processing materials available for reasonable pricing within the industry. For Democratic Technologies, I'm Tom O'Hanlon, signing off.